Hey there, this is PK of the PK Comic Book 411. Um, it's been a while, guys. In fact, I have a confession to make. I actually took my stacks and put them away, filed them away, uh, before I actually vlogged about them. I actually was going to stop the vlogs, except for one particular person, we'll call him the Wizard of Oz, said, hey, you know what? You read so many different titles, keep on doing it. Um, yeah, I don't even look at my number of views. It's disheartening. But uh, this is a test. I have a different area here. Um, hell, the, the noise is going to be back there because I didn't shut the door, but I set that up, you know. Oh, there. Moved right there. See? And then, as, I, as you see here, I'm trying to switch to trades. I'm trying to get less of all these singles because for some reason, people, whenever I put those singles into a long box in there, it's like it's, a, it's away from my head. It's like, you know, just gone. So, uh, let's get straight to it. Right now I'm going to do this test and just do the trades. Um, right here, always read Valiant first. That's their tagline, Valiant first. Also, if you want to be Grisbeed, uh, buy Valiant. Valiant's good. Or is it Valiant's good? Buy Valiant. Um, Divinity. It introduces a new character to the Valiant universe. A very succinct universe, I might add. Um, again, Read Valiant first. This is a new character. Um, I believe this is Matt Kent. And he has done wonders for the Valiant universe. However, I think he's a solid writer, not a prolific writer. When it comes to Valiant, people say they like Valiant. I'm thinking Bloodshot Volume 1 and Harbinger Volume 1. That's Dwayne Straczynski and Joshua Dysart. I believe Joshua Dysart is now doing Imperium. And yes, that's correct. And I can't wait to get to that. I'm currently uh, starting Act 4. There's a reading order of Valiant on Reddit, and it actually breaks it down to Act 1, 2, 3, 4, and now we're even up to 5 after Book of Death, starting going into the Imperium 4001 and a Labyrinth crossover. So that's some Valiant updates for you. Then we have, again, uh, Jeff, is it Lemire or Lemire? Does anyone know? Let me know. And uh, Matt Kent that did the Valiant. And that's sort of like, let's bring everyone together. I hope you don't see glare there, by the way. Um, side note, I also do these for auditions. And I just auditioned for Mercedes. I did not get Sense8, which is Straczynski, which is Midnight Nation we're going to talk about. Um, and I also did not get Steve Jobs. So here's an update for you on that. The Valiant brings everyone together, you know, big splash page of all of them together, coming together. Um, I believe this is the beginning of Act 3. To me, it's not as awesome as the beginning, like the relaunch from when Valiant bought a claim or something like that, and they relaunched um, with the new logo. Um, the old logo being, see if I can do this really quick. Yes, I can. The old logo. And if you look, in certain places, God, I think it was Archer and Armstrong, you'll see this within the story. Very, very cool. All right. Um, that's the Valiant and Divinity. That starts off uh, Act 4, I believe, of the Valiant reading order. And I save this for the third one. This is Peter Milligan. Peter Milligan came in to save Shadow Man. Justin Jordan, I really like the... Issue 0 and 10, fabulous, but wow, Shadow Man really went off the deep end. Um, so Peter Milligan was actually brought in for Shadow uh, Shadow Man End of Times, which was the very last one, which is sort of V5 and V4. Um, I'm going to say that this was a treat. It was a success story, but not of hack and slash and you win the day. No spoilers, but that yeah, that's what that is. And Peter Milligan, that was his first Eternal Warrior. Really enjoyed that. You can see all my different yellow right here, so I know what to show you. There's good stuff. I really enjoyed it. Um, so, if you get an Eternal Warrior, I suggest Peter Milligan's Days of Steel. Eternal Warrior Days of Steel. I think it's actually Volume 3. Yes, it is. And as you can see, the spines have changed. Now they're all colored. And the, where I usually do it, they're all white. You know, if you're like me, a completist, completionist, that bothers you. Uh, Drifter, Volume 1. It is <coughs> space as well as, as well as surreal. A little bit of uh, action combat. And it will not solve any questions by the end of it. It's fun to go through the experience, 
but I don't like to get confused. That's a little bit confusing. However, this one being sort of weird and confusing is succinct by the end. It actually ties it up, buttons it up, as we say. Um, so Martian Manhunter, Volume 1. Very odd stuff in here, but Rob Williams does piece it all together in the end. Midnight Nation, what a treat for me. Some aren't uh, JMS or J. Michael Straczynski's fans, but this trade paperback was a treat. If I really recommend it, especially if you like JMS and you haven't read this, Rising Stars is also on the menu for me. Um, may get his Thor omnibus thing. We'll see how far I get into it and just Straczynski because there's a lot going on here. All right, so if at any point this is not working for you, I want you to go to the afterword. If you're loving it, semi-loving it, get all the way through, then read the afterword. And if you absolutely are just not a JMS fan, you must read that afterword anyway. It actually tells where his impetus to writing is. Now, I'll give you just this one little glimpse of that, so as a teaser for Midnight Nation. He's, he was walking a lot. I won't say why, but he's walking a lot, walking all hours, you know, forest run type of thing. And he was at a particular corner. And it was very, uh, shall we say, underground and a lot of illegal activity on that corner. However, that was the same corner that he knew that all the soccer moms and everyone was dropping off their kids. So, they're sort of like a daytime nation and a midnight nation. And he took that experience in real life and then put forth this surreal story. Uh, that's a teaser, midnight nation, because that corner was different at the day and at the night. Sanfis Tech, I'm calling you out. Shout me out. Shout me out, Sanfis Tech. Rain, okay. So I have the singles. That's one through five, actually, isn't it? One through five, and then we have volume two, which is six through ten, and uh, that's for fourteen ninety nine. This has a twist you did not see coming, my friends. It was I'm a pen and paper D and D fan, PMP D and D from way back when, even before two point oh, and it spoke to me in that way. But then there's a couple of weird things that you're like, well, wait a minute, that that's sort of odd. And then by, I would say, the fifth one, and especially that one, completely 360. It's not a 180, it's a 360 in a different direction, a different 3D direction. All right, so D&D &D with a twist. And the priest clerics were of tech, T-E-K. Okay? Sanford's Tech, man, you got to read this. All right, I could go through each single, but let's not do that. Let's see how this test was. Um, shout out to CBNH. Oh, check it out. <laughs> I knew I was going to do my blog today. I believe that's a C, a B, a N, a, a, and an H. And then you have the actual written out logo there. Got to love it. They trim out the fat is what they do. So every time you go there, it's something you want to talk about. And that takes a lot of time and effort from the administrators. Signing off.